Hi everybody, I hope you're doing marvelously well. We're back with another in our series on seven ultimate mixing tips. This week we're going to be doing vocals and we're gonna have seven completely different songs mixed in seven different ways. So you're gonna to get to see all kinds of different ways that you can mix a vocal. First up, there's one with me. It's the mixing classic rock featuring uh, Robert John and the Wreck, and the song is Gypsy of Love. Um, I'm mixing in real time. I'll take you through vocal processing and effects for this kind of dirty, guttural, classic rock sounding track. Okay, so now I'm just gonna listen to the vocal. Oh, she leave him. So it's, it's kind of dull, isn't it? It's a dull sounding vocal. So again, maybe before we do anything else, I'm not hearing any need to DS at the moment, but we might do after this. <laughs> so here we go. I'm gonna, gonna wipe out the low lows and I'm just gonna like go whack. Oh, she leaving. Yay! Air! Yeah, she leaving me. I like it, okay, but is it getting a little bit too much at times? I don't know. Let's open up. We haven't even put any compression on yet. Let's go in there and do a bit of DSing. Oh, she leaving. Yeah, she leaving me. See what this does, brightening then DSing allows the whole vocal to get brighter, but the DSer catches when it gets too aggressive. But immediately I prefer that. I mean, I'm not even going through a sub on the vocal and it instantly sounds better. I don't always have to go through a sub, you know? Now, one of my favorites is an Arvox. It is a pretty spectacular. So it, the thing about the Arvox is, Oh, she leaving. It brings it forward. Yeah, she leaving me. Oh, she leaving. She's a gypsy. Yeah. yeah! It kind of folds in, I like it. That's him. I don't mind that. I do not mind that. It's because it just sounds like, you know, this is a 70s rock band. This is not a pretty, you know, like pop song. So we can get away with a lot more murder. The other day I was uh, doing a panel with the Gavin Lurson and Dave Way and, and uh, Mike Piasante does all T-Bone Burnett stuff. And Alan, oh, and CJ Vanson and Alan Myerson came up. I mean, Alan Myerson, he's a, he's a mixer for film. He does all of Hans Zimmer stuff. This guy is amazing. And it was very intimidating because the point is in rock and roll, we do all kinds of wrong things. There'll always be people on YouTube and everywhere else telling you you're doing it wrong, but you know what? That sounded interesting and exciting when it folded in. Oh, she leaving. Yeah, she leaving me. Oh, she leaving. She's a gypsy. Yeah, yeah. Gypsy love. Yeah. So I've got two verbs, two delays. The first verb is going to be. It's just gonna be mono. Why did I go stereo? All right, I'll go stereo. I'll just pan them in a little bit. I don't need it to be that big, okay? And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna select a very, very short delay. I'm gonna go medium. Okay, so let's just listen to the vocal. Let's go here on the verse and have a listen. It's been such a long time and gypsy woman running through my mind. It's been such a long time like it. Simple as that. Okay. All right. Next up, chorus verb. So what am I going to do? I'm going to copy the verb down, but I'm going to go and make, make it large. Let's just listen to that. Oh, she leave him. Do, 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 do. Oh, I made a mistake. Should change all these to be 13, 14. Make sure you do that as well. Okay. They're all 13, 14. All right. Oh, she leave him. Yeah, she leaving me. Oh, she leaving. Cool. So, quick thing. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to do this. Dum dee dum dum dum. He says zooming out of shot. I'm just going to take the verse 
reverb and just bring it down here, so. It's been such a long time. Give me. So what we're hearing is we're hearing the verse reverb because you see the chorus reverb got turned down dramatically. Okay, let's quickly go into the second verse and turn that down dramatically. And there you go. All right, quick automation. It's been such a. All right, so what are we going to do now on our two delays? Well, let's find some fun delays. Let's go and pick. Do, 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 do. H delay is always a favorite. I'll do two different delays. Okay, so here's the H delay. Let's mute this, let's mute this, let's mute this, and listen to the H delay. <laughs> what I like about it is it's already defaulted to 116 BPM. Let's have a listen. <laughs> what do you notice? It's a big muddled mess. It is an eighth, it's set to the eight. Oh, it's eight dotted, so let's get rid of that. Go to straight eighth. Okay, it's a big muddled mess. So how do we get out of the muddled mess? Well, if you've watched me, you all know what I'm about to do if you've watched anything in the past. I'm gonna to go to Dynamics, and I'm gonna select an Archon because it's really easy to use, and I'm gonna set a key input up here, and we'll pick a number, let's pick up the number 24. And we're gonna take it from the lead vocal, and we're gonna to go to, you guessed it, number 24, and we're gonna to send to it. So. You're like, what are you doing, Warren? Well, this is what I'm doing. I'm sending the vocal through 13, 14 to the delay. But I'm also, at the end, putting a compressor after the delay here. See, there's the delay, there's the compressor. And it's side chaining, being fed from 24. You're like, mind blown, what does he mean? Well, every time they sing, he sings, it will compress the delay. What does that mean? It means that delay will be turned down slightly or as much as I want it to be, and every time he stops singing, it gets turned up. What does that do? It stops the mud. It stops the, he's in. You know, if I bypass it. He's it's crazy. Now listen to it. He's been such a long time, gypsy woman running through my mind. He's been such a See what it does? It's awesome. So it turns the delays down, compresses them when he's singing, and when he's not singing, it comes up. Now, we don't need it to be as loud as I've got it, but it's great. It gives so much more interest to the mix. So you know what I'm going to do next? I'm going to go to that quarter. Let's go to that quarter delay. And let's, what should we pick? Let's pick something else. Let's just pick the most, because I like to move around and pick different ones. Let's pick, we have an H delay. Oh, what's the T-Rex tape echo? This could be fun. Oh, nice. So the question is, BPM sync. Yes, we'll do that. And it defaults to quarter. Yes. Let's have a listen to that. He's been hey, such a long time. Oh. Gypsy woman running through my mind. He's been such a long time. I never used this before. This is a winner. What a great delay. Does it look like that over there? It's they call it an echo flex. Well, that's an echo plex. See you in the background. That's so good. Okay, it's great, but yes. So what am I going to do? I literally just copied that compressor setting down and... It's been such a long time and Gypsy woman running through my mind It's been Together. such a long time It's been such a long time and Gypsy woman running through my mind He's Fantastic. All right, let's listen to them all together.
together. It's great. we have the rather wonderful Mr. Ken Sluter. Ken is mixing the Licorice Quartet. Now, those of you that know who that is, it's a super group made up of members of Jellyfish and all kinds of incredible guys. I mean, Roger Manning is in this band, Eric Dover, and of course, Tim Smith. So three incredible talents. Ken's going to show you the processing and the effects he used on Roger Manning's vocals. And of course, this is only one third of an amazing band. So check it out. The way you want to see for everyone's own move is through an altered lens. And I'll be you, and if we do, we can begin to understand. So basically, you can see that all, like, there's no plugins, no reverb or anything on the double. The double, Roger doubles so tight that it hardly sounds like a double. It just thickens it up a little bit. And for Roger, I added a little bit of distressor, 10 to 1, so like a 1176 mode. A little bit of, I like this Air plugin. Uh, on, uh, this is all in the Slate uh, plugins. Uh, API, boosting a little 10K, boosting a little 1.5, boosting 1.5 twice, uh, boosting some more, 1.5 on the 1073, twice, and, and, you know, basically these are the same EQs, it's that thing, I, you know, about, if I want to, if I want to wrench on it hard, I'll use a few different EQs, even at the same points, to get the thing where I want it to be, uh, and we're probably going to see more of the same, so that feeds into an 1176, at more or less the Dr. Pepper setting, which is 10 and 2 o'clock. Attack all the way to the left, release all the way to the right, 4 to 1. That's sort of the starting point. And then after that, uh, a little bit of Pultec EQ after the um, 1176, boosting a little 100 and boosting like quite a bit of 10K. And that, and then nothing on the, um, nothing on the, double and then that gets fed into a uh, parallel compression and the parallel compression is usually a combination of an 1176 and a Fairchild in this case it's 1176 leading and a Fairchild a little bit under so I'm going to play you the lead vocal with and without here's without the way you want to see for everyone's own move is through an altered lens. And then with, with the parallel compression. The way you want to see for everyone's own move is through an altered lens. And that's, you know, just for some perceived volume, just to get the vocal to pop out of the mix without popping out too much or too little. Sometimes for me, compressing an individual track too much takes the life out of it. So I like to, just like any instrument, I like to just blend some heavy compression underneath it. So I also like to add a little bit of an exciter to the voice. Uh, and that's just to sort of, just to add a little air, a little breath. I use the waves. Uh, vintage Royal Exciter. I think I have a de in front of there because it's gonna really bring out the S's. But when you listen to it, the way you want to see versus with it in, the way you want to see just adds a little bit of presence. It just adds a little bit of presence to the voice. Uh, I think I have a little bit of, you know, obviously there's some echo on his voice. That's, yeah, that's the uh, Echo Farm. Dynamic delay. The dynamic delay, when it's seeing input, it doesn't release the output. So that way, uh, it only releases the tags of the words. It's a little bit cleaner version of an echo. If you're just running a regular echo, they start building up onto each other. I got some some sort of uh, verb on there. What is that? Alta verb. Let's see what that is. The way you want to no. see. So Roger has uh, has some echo. I think the other guys probably have some reverb on it. I think Roger. Let's see. Does he have any slack? The way you want. No. So Roger's 
all about Roger's vocal is all about the parallel compression, some exciting, uh, some exciter, a little bit of echo, and then there's usually a little bit of micro pitch. The way you want to see for everyone's own is Which is just like a vocal doubler, uh, even tied H910, basically uh, uh, shifting it 10 cents to the left, 10 cents to the right, just to blur the pitch a little bit. And that's, uh, that's standard to do. Like almost everything I do has a little bit of that in there. So that's Roger's lead vocal. Uh, oh, one other thing to mention is for me, I'll use a de-esser when I have to, but typically like on an S, what I'll try to do is I just go through with clip gain and I'll knock them down four, five, six dB. So I'll just go through a track and any of the problem consonants, S's, F's, T's, anything that just sounds harsh to my ear, I'll just, I'll just turn it down. Because when you're turning it down in clip gain, you're turning it down before any of your processing. So it's kind of the best moment to do it. Uh, so if you see a lot of these edits in here, that's what those edits are, clip gain edits. Next up, we have Bob Horn and Eric Rikers, who share a great studio together. They worked with Little Empire, and they did full pre-production, production, mixing, you name it. But what is interesting about that is even though they worked together on the engineering and the production, they individually mixed the track each. So there's two completely different perspectives on the mix. They both sound great, but they're two completely different ideas. So first up, we have Bob Horn. On the vocals, we have... Um... All three of these are, are fairly similar. I have an automated EQ on the bridge on the main lead. Otherwise, they're they're pretty identical. Um, so I'll just show you this the main one. Uh, high pass filter, just kind of you know pulling out low rumble. Then we have the VMR mix rack with the blue compressor. Um, the mix is fairly high, but it's not 100%. Um, I used to use another 1176 compressor for my lead vocal and lately I've been favoring this one and I think it's because I can compress it heavy like oh, I've always done with vocals but then I can back it off just a slight bit. Um, so let me show you the amount I'm doing. There must be something that you need Maybe that something is me So right now, by the way, I have the music, uh, instead of soloing, I just have the music turned down um, so you can hear the vocal clearly. Next in line, I have the C6 multiband, uh, working mostly on the high end, the kind of piercy sharp frequencies in her vocal. Um, we auditioned a few different mics and the Lewitt LCT 940 tube mic was the winner it just had the best vibe um but it's uh her her vocal and that mic there might have been a smoother choice but you know we only had so much time and so many microphones to audition but it sounded great um but definitely uh it, it could stand to have some control in some of the piercing frequencies uh, especially when she starts belting but she's got such a wide range of both notes and dynamics uh like she'll just jump up a fifth you know um and uh you know this just kind of helps control all that high end there must be something that you need maybe that something is me so i'll kind of solo the areas there must be something that you need all that stuff and then um super high there this is kind of the same area, but it continues to go above where this band is all the way up with the shelf. And then, uh, there must be something that you need. Yeah, that piercy 2K telephone kind of frequency. And then a little bit of low end control. There must be something that you need. With, uh, with Lily, she was definitely close on the mic, so there's definitely a proximity effect. It was in cardioid mode, um, which tends to have more proximity than say omni or wide cardioid um and on the verse she's lower in pitch as well the the hook the way they wrote the melody it definitely jumps up on the hook so 
on the verses, she's heavier in the low end, uh, just from a sonic point. So, um, kind of just tucking that proximity a little bit with this C6. Then I have a Massey DSer. I love this DSer because it has a mix knob. There's a, there's a few DSers out on the market now that have mix knobs. I think this was the first one to do it. Um, and it's just, it works really well. It's, I never have a problem with this DSer. It seems to always be the perfect thing. Um, so I'm knocking off the DSs. There must be something pretty strong, but then I have the mix kind of reserved. It's not all the way up at a hundred, you know. There must be something that you need. Um, okay, then we have uh the Pultec. What's crazy about Pultec EQs and the reason everyone loves them is because I don't know how to describe it. They they add like a bigness to the sound that's not the same as if you were to take a regular parametric and recreate the same curves. Um, <clears throat> and this Waves Puig Tech definitely emulates that. And uh, it's funny, even though I'm filtering out low end, uh, compressing the proximity area, when I boost this 100 hertz, it still sounds awesome, still sounds better. It has this, and that's a shelf, so it's boosting everything from, you know, around 100 below. Uh, but it sounds cool. I, I can't help but leave it on. It just sounds cool. And then um, the air frequencies on this 10, 12, 16, they sound really, really good. Um, so I kind of, a lot of times on vocals, depending on how they're recorded, I, I find myself doing this or some combination similar to this where I'm boosting the 100 and boosting either 10 or 12, occasionally 8 or occasionally 16. Um and that adds a nice air. In addition, uh, on that mic and with her voice, she has a above 12 and above 10K. She has this super air that's uh, it's way up there. And especially on my speakers, I hear it really well. And it, um, it was kind of bothering me. So I, I attenuated, um, in case you guys don't know, these two knobs go together. This switch... 5k 10k 20 and this attenuation go together and then these three go together the boost the bandwidth and the frequency and then these three go together boost attenuate and these frequencies so i'm boosting 10 and this is parametric a bell curve and then i'm cutting a shelf of 10 so right around the same frequency but all the way up above 10 i'm doing 5 db down so it's a pretty unique curve you can get with these pull techs, and that's why people like them. Um, and then this is shelf of low end. And um, usually on a, on a typical plug-in, you have a knob where 12 o'clock is flat. And then if you go to the right, it's boosting. If you go to the left, it's cutting. With the pull tech, you have the advantage of being able to literally do both. And you might ask yourself, why would you do that? You're... You're just evening out what you did, but you're not. This is the crazy thing. With the Pultec, these frequencies are, they're close to what it's doing, but they're not exact. On the, uh, I forget which one is higher or lower, but just say, for example, when we have the selector at 100 hertz, we're probably boosting a shelf of 115 and below. But if we cut, we're cutting 90 and below. So they're not both at 100 they're in different spots and they work differently so you can get these really weird curves where right before you boost you dip and then boost and it's kind of like i was when i was doing earlier where i was tucking certain frequencies after i had boosted a bell curve and that's what this does all by itself and that's why people like it especially on low-end instruments bass and kick because you can do a big low-end boost and then do a cut and it, it makes it big but tight. So <clears throat> um, that's kind of the whole theory behind the Pultec, little, little history there. Moving on, uh, got a Pro-Q going. Um, looks like I'm kind of doing a few of the same things that the C6 was doing. I'm, I'm pulling out some of the low proximity stuff, pulling out a little bit of the mids. Uh, there's one uh, super high frequency. 
that might have been on the on the chorus or the bridge uh that that was bothering me but uh i'm also doing a really wide slope shelf from pretty low um so it's, it's picking up all this and and above and really just kind of opening it up as well as pushing up uh this area here around three um let's see where was i okay so after that we go into this is the isotope this is from the ozone 7 bundle this is just the dynamic eq and um let's see what we're doing there must be something that you need so again you can see the the spectrum analyzer when it's moving she really just has a lot of proximity buildup so again just like that c6 i'm riding that area again there must be something that you need you can see that low end frequency dancing around it's really strong and then this is a really really great plugin to boost high end on vocals it's really smooth and never really hurts or gets gritty um so i'm doing a boost while also doing gain reduction so it's a really controlled boost there must be something that you need almost kind of like a de -esser in a way um so let's hear that without that there must be something that you need there must be something that you need it's just a little more clear a little more open so then finally i have a another de -esser. there must be something that you need might even be a little strong um have to hear it in the whole mix and see maybe we can bring some of her s's back uh and then on the bridge she kind of got into this low oh do you do you really want me um she got quieter and lower so then i had to raise the the fader for the mix wise uh mix wise but uh that again that low area just became more apparent so this eq automates on just for the bridge and you can see on the spectrum uh this is a helpful tool just to see oh do exactly the right frequency to to pull out oh do you do you really want me oh right tell there. me to so check this out without it oh do you do you really want me oh tell me tell me you do so it's not that drastic but it, it definitely within the mix cleans it up a little bit keeps it from fighting with other instruments um you know the bass it allows us to have other things in the mix be bigger in that area because she's not there getting in the way um so that's our leads now let's go over to eric rikers and see how eric mixes the vocals to the same song that bob just mixed there must be something that you need Maybe that something is me Maybe we had too much to drink yet yeah. You get pretty aggressive with this compressor uh, Knocking down 10 dB And it's not necessarily Overly pumpy or breathy and that type of thing um, It's It just, just kind of keeps her in place so, um, there must be something that you need. Maybe that something is me. Maybe we had a much to drink, yeah. Or maybe that's what we need. Just does a real good job, I think, of, of keeping things sounding nice and even and, and steady. Um, from there, I like to um, I like to do DSing right away before I start EQing um, because I find that if you can if you can tame some of the peaks that jump out first, then you can do an overall EQ after the fact. Um, after these other things have been tamed and they don't they don't jump out at you. So um, I know there's a lot of really good DSers out there uh, and newer DSers. I'm still kind of rocking the RDSer, but it's such a good DSer. Um and uh I just I've been using it for a long time and and uh and like it a lot. So um but I try to do that 
right before I start doing any real major EQing because I feel like it's important to get some of those sibilant things tamed before you start adding in other EQ and things like that um, because then the sibilants can really start getting out of control. So if you tame it first, um, you kind of start with something that's a little more even and then you can kind of shape around that. So um, from there, um, I'm using this multiband, this C6. And um, there must be something that you need. You see, I'm kind of really hitting the uh, that mid-range area that I was talking to you about, the uh, like that, you know, 2K to 4K range. Really pushing down on that, and um, a little bit in the low mids too, getting a little warm in that area, a little little murky in that area. So I decided that uh, this would be better than just trying to EQ all that out make it be a little more of a dynamic compression thing to help it still sound natural but not just completely scoop out some of this information. Um, and then you can see up here too, I've got this high shelf going which is also acting as a, a sibilance control. So it's almost a little bit like double DSing. I've got the RDSer going, but then also using this, uh, this band here to uh, control some of that, that sibilance. Some of that kind of real, that real squeaky stuff up there that, that just just can get out of control real quick. Um, so then after I've got kind of the dynamics and some of that frequency stuff in place, I added a little bit of um, EQ here. Um, Ended up still feeling like those low mids were a little too much, so I did end up pulling that down um, up two and a half dB, or excuse me, three and a half dB. But um, um, we still had enough of a, there was enough there, and this was kind of riding it well, but I still needed to pull out a little bit more, I guess. Um, and then I did do the, uh, the dip here as well in that two to four K range. And now that it's been tamed, I feel like um, a lot of times you can take an EQ and now push that area up. If you're pushing, riding it the whole time, sometimes it can get lost, but you can take that ride now, now that it's been evened out in this, this riding it, you can actually do an overall boost. And this is very subtle. This is like not even just a little above a half a DB. So it's not much. Um, because she, once again, that, that range for her can get, get real bitey real quick. So, um, I don't think this is the most polished vocal sound. It's definitely not a super clean and bright um, uh, vocal sound. But I think where I ended up getting the track to being this, you know, sort of dirty and rock vibe, I felt like the vocal was in that same realm rather than trying to really make it a super shiny Windex, wipe it off, make it really bright and crystal clear and clean. I, I, I kind of wanted it to be a little bit more, not, not so pretty, if you will. So a um, little bit of, uh, looks like a little bit of um, boosting here at eight, trying to get a little bit of the uh, upper stuff back after it's been compressed and pushed down with this C6 up here in this upper area. Um, using the Pultec and getting kind of that, that Pultec vibe on it. And then um, at some point in the mix, after getting all the elements in and getting the vocal put in, um, I went and grabbed another EQ. And look at this, I, I'm deciding that this was still too much um, of that that mid-range that st starts to hurt. So I started pulling that down um, even more. Um, in hindsight, I probably could have gone back up to, uh, to this one, taken that out, and um, done the adjustments here. Um, but sometimes when you're in the middle of a mix, you, you just kind of want to start with where you're at and 
it was probably easier for me to just grab this EQ and go on and, and put this in right here. So um, that's kind of the treatment for the lead vocal. Um, after that, I don't think this is, this was probably, yeah, I was trying to be a little more aggressive in this. Uh, it's like more like the six or seven K, but I ended up not needing it, I guess, after I got to a, a certain point. So I bypassed it. Um, maybe have that, actually, I guess I have that automated. You know what? That probably comes in, in a spot where I needed it, where I felt like it was poking out too much. So maybe let's look at that and see what I did there. Yeah, here we go. So the bypass. So here, yeah, on the chorus. So in the verse, I felt like it was okay. But in the, in the uh, choruses, it, she needed a little more of that um, control, it looks like. Um, it's probably right around, where is that at? Uh, yeah. Right, uh, yeah, 7K basically. So, um, and you see it's pretty tight on the Q2. It's not a, a wide, wide. So I was kind of really trying to dig in on which thing was poking out. But automated the master bypass so that it only comes on during the choruses. And that's, you know, we've got so much, this, we've got a lot of distorted instruments and guitars and things happening there. So really trying to be mindful of her not sounding too crazy in that world. Not too polished, but not too, um, not not too crunchy either and, and piercy and bitey. So um, the verses where the rest of the instruments kind of pull back and are a little more tame, I felt like her vocal wasn't, um, it wasn't hurting with that uh, in there. So I automated it just for the, uh, just for the choruses. Next up, we're going to go heavier. We're going to go with Jordan Valeriot, who is mixing a track by Silverstein called Face of the Earth. And this is a scream vocal. So this one will be a lot of fun. And, you know, again, show you all the different approaches and different genres that you can do. So we're coming to the vocals now. And what you're going to see on my vocal mixing here is a very similar processing chain. In a lot of cases, the exact processing chain you saw in the last song. The only difference is just going to be, you know, the, the different frequencies I'm EQing maybe and just kind of the amounts of processing or compression, but essentially it really is the same. It's, just, it's the same processing chain, you know, EQ into compression, de some saturation and a limiter at the end. That's what I've got for the screams. That's what I've got for the singing vocals, same kind of delays happening. So basically the same thing, I'll just kind of dig in and show you what's happening. So on the screens, again, same chain. They take our pictures to angels and caves. So a little bit different style scream here. It's it's less kind of low and, and, and guttural. It's more just like a high kind of um, intense yelly kind of scream. So let's just back up to the raw sound here. They take our pictures to angels and kings. We're all pretending we're someone. And then we can mute all of our effects here as well. But like I said, again, I would start with the 1176 blue, exact same settings as before, the in-your-face vocal, tack right in the middle here, and release fast. And again, listen, when we AB, even though the, the level drops here, I just, I didn't set it up as, you know, being equal in and out uh, before and after the compressor. Uh, but if we listen to it raw here, take our pictures to angels and kings. now listen to when the compressor's in, how it sounds like you're just pushing the words that much harder. Take our pictures to angels and kings. Love what this compressor does and kind of any compressor where you can get a pretty fast attack and pretty fast release and just kind of slam it like this, uh, you're gonna be able to get more of an in-your-face vocal sound. Now, once the compressor's going, I'll EQ into it. Take our pictures to angels and so in this case, not a whole lot needed. We just got some 8K, a two and a half TB and an 8K shelf. And then we just got a little boost here on 1.7K. So in the other session, if you remember, 
I talked about, you know, trying to find an area between one and about two and a half K where the vocal really kind of pops out a bit. Take our pictures to angels and cats. In this case, about 1.75. And clean it up the low end a little bit. Minus 2 dB shelf at 150. And he's he's kind of screaming right into an SM7B here. So we definitely got a little bit of proximity effects. So that shelf kind of helps clean that up along with the high pass filter here at 110. Now we're also doing some compression six to one, fast attack, fast release. So even compressing a little more, I thought it could use a bit more going into the uh, 1176. So I'll bypass the compressor here. <laughs> with it just really trying to to squeeze it and get it every drip of intensity we can out of the vocal with the two compressors here after that we got the deesser standard same settings you saw in the last session you can really hear it there Not crazy, but just taming it a little bit. Then we got the L1. This is just cleaning up the peaks and just containing it. So really barely even touching it uh, and most for the most part. And then some saturation here with Phoenix. Let's bring our effects back in here. So same effect chains. I've got my stereo delay here, which exact same settings as the other session. This is in my template. This basically never changes. 180 on the left, 220 on the right. And then we've got the vocal delay, which is that mono delay where I use this H delay plugin. Again, same settings, quarter note, a fair bit of feedback. We got the high and low pass filter kind of giving this a very subtle telephone effect here. And I got the lo-fi button in. Take our pictures to angels and cakes. I just thought it was a little too dry without it here. If we listen to the mix, I'll mute that delay. Take our pictures to angels and cakes. We're all pretending we're someone. Take our pictures to angels and cakes. We're all pretending we're someone. Just a little bit of, of echo to fill in the gaps kind of in the screams there. And here in the second verse, we've got the stereo doubles. Again, kind of the same thing we saw in the After Image song. Just giving some high end, taking out a little low end, and then compressing. I can't feel a thing. More limiting here. I can't feel a thing. And as usual, we got a little bit of a long plate on those stereo screams. I can't feel a thing. Richard Furch is an amazing producer, engineer, and mixer who has worked with Prince on Lotus Flower and many other incredible records. He's one of my favorite mixers and educators. The way he explains is pretty incredible. So in this clip, Richard uses four different inserts um, to process and reshape the vocal into a way that he wished it had been recorded. Afterwards, he makes the vocal more dense for impact and with a little bit more compression, EQ, and tape emulation to achieve that. The overall level of this recording is not bad, but a little bit too soft. I can see that already. And so I go into this guy here. This, this is a super cool version of the Clam, Clanghelm VU. Um, it's basically like an input stage on your desk. You know, it's a VU meter, a couple of tools here, low, low cut filter, and yay, a trim. Why do I use this instead of the, the other trim? Is in this particular case is because I'm shooting for a very exact level, which is zero VU. I want to see it, and I, you know, 
I could uh, just do a little bit of a low cutting while I'm at it. Let's play a little bit of it. Let's see without first. You see that? That's just too soft. Uh, that's. It's not badly recorded. I'm not saying that, by the way. Um, I'm just saying that for the way I want to have a zero VU signal kind of arrive where the green meets the yellow somewhere around there. This is just too soft. Let's see what this does. So, okay, you see it's a little closer. We're pushing at 6 dB. And of course, we'll, because it is dynamic. Some are 3 dB too soft, and some are, let me find one here. Remember what we had. Way too soft, loud. Of course, that's the job of a compressor. But at least I am getting this vocal into the uh, uh, into the realm of like where I would have recorded it. Okay, you're following me, of course. Then I said, well, you know, I would have done a little bit more compression first. So I get it. This is, man, a workhorse. workhorse. Our compressor, since it came out, it's just, it's a so, it's such a nice vocal compressor. It just does the trick, you know, get it a little bit more in your face, yeah, get about 2 dB hearts. more compression. Be a be gone. I always will. Oh, let me turn off these effects too. Sorry about that. Um, All I know is. I, I also keep keep with the, everything should be matched. So it should, like, even though when I turn this on and off, focus. it's always kind of in the same blurring, ballpark volume-wise. It's important you can try to uh, find the um, sound and compare sounds. Uh, so th these, these first two are something that I would have tracked with. And then I'm starting to slowly go like, okay, we need to go from something somewhat, somewhat pretty dynamic to much more, <laughs> sorry, much less dynamic. Such as this. I like the CLA 3A. Thank you, Chris Lord Algae and Waves. I like the uh, I like the 1176s. It's something something that's familiar to me. You, know? you see now on the meter, we're now always kind of where I wanted it. Like I said, uh, green to yellow, a good manageable level. Let me let me show you one thing that I uh, I, I do from time to time. I think it's funny to look at. I'm gonna commit up to this insert on this particular compressor, so it will take all of these into account, but not these. And um, and I wanted to show you the waveform just real quick. There it is. So see what see what I mean on the first look at you at the waveform that was presented to me. I see all the dynamics and that's cool, whatever. But I actually want something more like this. Now, is this too much or too little? I don't know yet. Uh, we're working our way there, right? But it is in the end all the vocals that we're working on. They want to be all the way forward. We want to listen to most of the. Um, most of the um, uh, syllables, etc., of the articulation. So this is much closer, right? If somebody sent me this as a first recording, I would have also said, well, you know, that's fine as a source too. I just engineered this one into that one, basically. I'm going to delete this now, because basically this is what's happening here in the background anyway. But this is just a look at what's happening with that compression and why I'm doing it. Okay, let's delete that again. Don't need that. Um, okay, fun. Then right after that, um, I, I see what I'm hearing from the vocal. Play our song for the bro broken, broken hearts. It's a little thin, you know, it's like it could have a little bit more presence, both presence as in upper mid range, etc., but also presence in the lower mids where you, you're just like, you know, this vocal could be just closer to you in general. And this is where I come in with a C4 multiband compression. Um, it's really a dynamic EQ slash multiband compression. Um, in case you don't know how that works, remember what we had. I know that we will never play that get for back, you a little bit. I can't get over. Remember what Bypass we had. I know that we so will never get it back, but I can't get over. Remember what we had? I know thin, that we will never get it back. It's, it's not a bad sound, but it's a little thin, you know. Remember so I'm what we deciding, had. okay, I, I want more, three and a half back, more dB more on the low end. Remember what we had? I know that we will never get it back. But, but you know, like, we have the vocal pushing Remember against it, so it's never fully back. 
muddy. It's just pushing it against it, and if it's too much, it goes back down. So we're dancing on the low end between zero, almost zero here, and the 3 dB that I decided it should be louder. Turn it off for a moment. Thin. Uh-huh. We like that, but I, what I hear at the same time is, you know, like, I want more presence in the upper mid-range too, because she has that sound. Sorry, turn it off for a moment. She has that sound that, uh, that is, you know, part of her voice is that uh, openness on the, uh, on the upper mid-range. And so I want to push a little bit there too, like in this case, 2 dB. This is not something that I hear immediately, but I might push these up 5 d, uh, 0.5, go up, go down. The output here, the gain, is basically just an EQ. Pushing more of that section. In this case, let me solo it for you. That part, you know? By itself, of course, it sounds hurtful, but it's an important part of the actual sound of the vocal. So let's unsolo this. Remember what we had. I know that we will never get it back. Okay, let's turn this part off only. Over. If I only take the upper band up, of course, the stridentness of the sound that we actually try to avoid is even getting worse, right? Remember what we had. I know that we but will never get it back. But the boost again is a little bit up, over. but actually in the worst case Remember goes back to zero with that, that dynamic EQ. So it's kind of, again, over. dancing, dancing. The, these lines, and actually let me go to a second verse here, when she sings lower, sh the upper mid-range will stay up more because basically we're helping the lower vocals have more upper mid-range by, by dynamic EQ, and when she goes into the higher res, uh, res register, we're going to push against them again so it doesn't get too strident, like this. Somehow you can you see, still call it me moves but on that much less, and so Somehow the upper mid-range stays more and carry straight on. the whole time. That's the whole part of point of um, dynamic EQ instead of actual EQ. Because in, if you actually just use a static EQ, then you know you might solve this problem here in the verse, but then it's going to stride in the chorus and vice versa. So let me add these two together. Somehow you can still call me friend, but on that production. Okay, and then I bypass it. Somehow you can still call me friend, but on that production. It's, uh, I'm raising it a little bit in level. That's normally not what I want, like I tell uh, tell you. But but the more important part is that we have these two vocal ranges. The everything above one k that could be too strident but gets pushed against. Everything below one k that could be too muddy get that gets pushed against. But if you if you look at the if you look at the graph, uh, these are the kind of balancing each other the whole time. Let's go to a different section just for kicks, but you, you see that, look at the graph. I can't get over when I sit down to focus. My eyes blur and I'm feeling distracted. What I you preaching? That's, that, that's basically the idea on that. Now, I want to say at this point too, our vocals are very, very subjective, subjective. Like some people want to hear them super bright. Some people want to hear them airy. Some people want to have a lot of heft in them. Some people want a lot of woof or chest in them and some say yeah, that's that's mud to me and it's uh, i think that's one of the most uh, most important things as a, as a mixer or and a producer to figure out what is comfortable for you for that particular singer but also where do you find in, the emotion in it in it like a very skinny high vocal has a different emotional impact than a very swampy low mid vocal and it can work for different kinds of songs. I and mean, in this case, I felt it actually should be a little bit darker here. Like a, I'm pushing the low mids a little bit further than the high mids. Um, and it's not the brightest vocal ever. It's kind of like in the middle. It has like a, it has a texture to it that is that I think fits the song. Um, but know that this is very subjective and I think you should think about what you like and what you want to apply. Uh, and then their client will tell you if they agree or don't. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. <laughs> um, anyway, so but after, basically, if I play this now from here to, let's say, uh, from the pre-chorus to the chorus here, you will hear something that is at the right level, is dynamically in decent shape, like it's not too 
too dynamic anymore, and is um, spectrally, if you if there's such a word, it's spectrally kind of even too. Like it it gives you more meat, and it stays at the forefront. Um, let's listen to that for one second. Cause I can see it, I can see it, I can see it nonstop. The way you vibe, you had me on top. We used to ride, and we take it in stride. When you see me on the corner, let me not the rum shop, but I'm coming back to sober now. And your heart getting cooler now. Remember what we had. I know that we will never get it back. But I can't get to over. Okay. And so this would be actually a vocal that I would consider, well, maybe I would have recorded it myself this way and I would be in okay shape. And that's where we basically get to the right side of it. Like basically now, had we had this on tape, we could, you know, we could consolidate it, we could print it, and then I would start from that. But because my computer is so powerful, Yay. Um, I can just leave all this running in, uh, in life. So let's go here to the tube tech. Tube tech, like I said earlier, I do have the uh, uh, hardware version and I would normally use it. But like, sometimes I try to push myself into places where I say, well, let's try something new. Like, for instance, in this case, use only plugins on these vocals, actually. But also, I do not think one is necessarily better than the other. They all sound a little different, but if I get what I want out of the plugin, I might start there. That's not a problem. The cool part of the plugin is it's, it's much more easy, easily uh, adjustable because, well, it obviously recalls <laughs> right away. Uh, and because I had more of these vocals, I can have as many as I want, more or less. That being said, I, I just happen to use this one. This is not because I love it or anything like that or I don't love it um, it's just because I could use either and it'll work <laughs> so here we go on this compression just a little touch you know we already we already compressed now uh, here at this compressor and that compressor we're, we're pushing the vocal just a little higher, and I'm not saying vocal uh, level, we're staying same with the level, but we're pushing it denser and denser. That's, I guess, the better word to, to use here. So this helps us with less rides later, or when the rides happen, then we can use them for musical changes, not because of a technical technicality of the vocal just being too soft here. Or, um, we're pushing it into a very manageable place and then using the rights for impact, et cetera. Wow, I, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I use tape, I use tape plugins a lot, but not that often in that many times in one song, you know. The, the reason I probably used this one is I still needed more of that feeling of like, well, still a little papery. So let's see what that sounds like. Because I can see it, I can see it, I can see it nonstop. The way I vibe, I had me pent up. Let me turn that off here. The way I vibe, I had me pent up. Yeah, did you hear that? The way I vibe, I had me pent up. A little thicker, you know, same level, whatever. I, I like that for that kind of thickening. Uh, and then we're actually starting to EQ it a little bit here. Um, wow, it's very, very minimal. Um, just a little bit, yeah, I'll turn that off for a moment. I felt like we could have more presence, like forwardness, and that the mid, that we had pushed up the middle, the low middle, and the high mids, but then maybe I created a little bit, tiny bit of a hole in the middle there. So that's why I thought this might be a move. Let's see what this sounds like uh, with, uh, without it. Yeah, one more time with it now. We used to ride and we take yeah. it in stride. When you see me on the corner, let me not the rum shop, but I'm... Just a little bit more solid in the center. Let's let's go with that. I think that's that's probably the best description. That's why I did it. And then, uh, well, you use a lot of compression uh, and actually high frequency, uh, high, high mid frequency extension. And all of a sudden, everything is obviously more prone to be a problem with the S's, etc. So I like normally de-S'ing at the end of a chain because it normally means I only have to de-S a little bit then. Plus, if you do it at the beginning, it does work, but like some of the de-S'ing is undone by the f subsequent compression. So I don't know. In, in some cases, you might move a de up upward uh, to the beginning or to the end and just see what where it works better. Sometimes you split the difference as in you would take 
two DSs and have them work half as hard and put one in the front and one in the back. All of that has happened to me, uh, have, has worked for me. Sometimes I turn on down the SS by hand. Uh, that is very time intensive and uh, I'm lucky to have an assistant to do that. But sometimes that's the clearest way to use it. Let's see how hard I'm hitting it. We used to ride and we take it in stride When you, you see know, me money come and let me not shop but time Here's a semester. We used to ride and we take it in stride When you see me money And with a dog We used to ride and we take it in stride When you see me money come and let me not do rum shop and, and I personally also think that the SS also is kind of like a personal touch Like where do you th think a DSI is too, too little or too much is probably a subjective idea But I like it here and then lastly, uh, this is hard to show. This is an this is a, a awesome plugin by MacDSP. It's also an, an active equalizer, or basically a, dyna a dynamic equalizer. But this one I use in a much more detailed way. Like uh, there are some frequencies in this vocal, and I'm not sure if I can find it. Now. And your heart gets cool and all. Maybe I can find one. Yeah, we just feel right. Okay. Well, there's some movement, so maybe it's here. Uh, that just peek out for a moment and uh, disappear, but they're not part of the actual sound. They don't happen all the time, you know. So let me see without it for more. Yes, I remember what you feel like. And together we just feel right. Yes, I remember what you feel like. And together we just feel right. Feel right. Cause I'm not sure if I can explain this one really great. This is just something more like a repair tool to me. There's some frequencies that I hear from my speakers that I feel that they're lounging at me in a way that uh, don't quite work for uh, for me. So then I try to use, I could do this by hand, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> so I found the IA600 to be hel very helpful to like kick out the last few frequencies where I go like, you know, that, 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 that does not might quite work for me. So this is more a tool for repair than tone shaping. I hope that makes sense a little bit like that. Last but by no means least, Mr. Phil Allen. Phil um, is my old assistant, my old engineer, and my old co-producer, who of course uh, won a Grammy for recording Someone Like You by Adele. In this video, he's gonna take us through his mixing in the box process for vocals. He did a course completely mixing a song in the box, so there's no external or any hybrid units used in this. And uh, Phil's a great guy and an incredible educator. He actually now teaches full time. Now this vocal's already tuned. We did that in the other video, if you wanna kinda of go back and watch that. I barely have to tune Morgan, it's great. A note here and there. I wanna feel the sting of the morning light Bathing the hills and valleys in its gold and I know that I put my world at stake. My shoulders will ache from the weight, but I don't mind. So that put is a little bit. And I know that I put my world. So I'm, I haven't done any filtering on it. First thing I'll do is kind of see if that helps it. But don't be afraid to go in there for these P's like that guy. And you can just gain them down. Or even EQ them. Just put a low filter on that one part. Gain that guy down. That should help. Might be aggressive. Let's see. I put my world. It's already better. Now, obviously I didn't do that, so I didn't feel the need after I put the plugins on, but sometimes I'll go through if it's really bad and I'll take care of all those P's and B's. Um, you just highlight them, gain them down. Again, takes forever, it's like doing the Tom thing, but especially if you're putting compression on a vocal, those little plosives can really send your compression into haywire um, and just cause you all sorts of hell. Uh, all right, so first thing on a vocal, I almost always put a de -esser first. Um, I know I'm gonna put a compressor on it and compressors will bring out the, th the sizzle of something. So I kinda wanna just preemptively strike that down and put a little bit of a de on there. Nothing crazy. I'm just using the normal one here. I wanna set to 6K. I wanna know what lives in the heart of man deep inside the shadows of the soul. Anytime with a de you wanna make sure you're not doing it too much because you will make them sound like they have a lisp. Let me show you what that sounds like. It's pretty funny. I want to know what lives in the heart of man, deep inside the shadows of the soul. You can kind of hear it's just making all the S's funky. So I like to be nice and gentle. You can always put more DS on later. I want to know what lives in the heart of man, deep inside the shadows of the soul. Nice. 
really simple de -esser. It's kind of a no-brainer plugin. I like it. Uh, all right, so we didn't use any compression when we were tracking this. Uh, I would have put an 1176 on it. It's one of my favorite vocal compressors. So I just use the Bomb Factory one that comes with Pro Tools. This thing's great. I want to know what lives in the heart of man, deep inside the shadows of the soul. Not doing much so far. I want to feel the sting of the morning light, bathing the hills and valleys in its gold. And I know that I put my world at stake. My shoulders will ache from the weight, but I don't mind. This, this plug-in, this compressor has a really neat way of making stuff sound thicker and more aggressive at the same time. I just love it on vocals. Vocals and snare drums. Air it down, build it stronger than before. Forge it from fire and build it to endure. You can kind of hear what it's doing there in the low mids. Adding this nice, like, thickness. Steal your heart, if only for the fight. Tomorrow another day will come, I'm sure. So once again, I'm not trying to solve all my compression issues with this one compressor. I'm just putting it on there to kind of add something in that I was missing. Um, we'll see that I later on put more compression on it, actually two more stages, really, um, that take care of other problems. So. There's just a simple de simple compressor, and now my EQ plugin, just my EQ37 band. Looks like what I was doing here was a little bit of a air boost, which is always nice on a vocal. Um, and looks like cutting some low mid resonances and cutting some low end. So let's see what that did. Steal your heart, if only for the fight. Tomorrow another day will come, I'm sure. So this is another case that I probably went and swept through my mid-range frequencies to find where I was hearing a little bit of that, that weird kind of singing through a cardboard tube sound. Looks like I found one at 350 and another one at 1.6K. Steal your heart, if only for the fight. That's really ugly. So I brought a little bit of that down. Steal your heart, if only for the fight. Tomorrow another day will come, I'm sure. Of this I'm sure. Of only this I'm sure. So again, not a crazy amount of EQ going on there, but just a little bit of fixing and then a little bit of enhancing. And now I have my character compressor on there, my smack. Let's listen to what that guy's doing. Three to one ratio, looks like I did a great job gain staging that one. Let's see. Uh, they have this cool little side chain EQ. It just changes how the compressor reacts to different frequencies. Um, if it's a bit spitty, I'll use this guy up here. A uh, little bit of that harmonic stuff added into it. Let's see how it sounds. Air it down, build it stronger than before. Forge it from fire and build it to endure. Steal your heart, if only for the fight. Again, this compressor is kind of giving me a bit of a boost in the thickness and that little low mid thing going on. Plus, it's, it's just really nice bringing out the detail, all those little things in his voice um, that he does really, really well. So already two stages of compression, I'm kind of bringing the dynamics, reining them in a bit, but also adding character as I'm doing it. Uh, another de -esser. So I don't have one de doing too much, I have two de doing a little bit. Tear it down, build it stronger than before. Forge it from fire and build it to endure. Steal your heart, if only for the fight. It's really helping with those things going on there, so they don't sound too in your face. Um, now here's a fun one. Again, I love distortion plugins. So I put that same air distortion on there. This time a little bit of a parallel processing thing going on. I don't even have my drive cranked up at all. I have this pre-shape to probably add a little bit of brightness to it, but I only have it mixed in at a little below half. 
Tear it down, build it stronger than before. Forge it from fire and build it to endure. And it's really just adding edge to his voice. I'll show you what the whole thing sounds like all the way wet. Steal your heart, if only for the fight. Dry. Tomorrow another day will come, I'm sure. Of this I'm sure. Of only- So you can see when it was all the way wet, it was way too aggressive. It sounds like industrial. Um, but just a little bit added in there, I'm kind of bringing in something that I was missing from that vocal, a little bit of parallel processing. What I'm gonna do next, is put a little bit of reverb on that vocal. I put some on the acoustic so it sounds like it's in a space. I wanna put some on the vocal so it sounds like it's in a space. Now, if this was just vocal and acoustic guitar, I would probably send that vocal to the same reverb I sent my acoustic guitar to. But we're gonna be adding stuff in. I wanna be able to have a little more control, so I'll kinda of show you how I initially get my reverbs going in my vocal. I like to blend or stack reverbs on top of each other. Same way I don't like any one compressor doing all of my work, I don't like any one reverb doing all my work, especially with the vocal. So a lot of times I'll set up, I usually just start with my stock three, a room, a plate, and a hall. And I'll create a send to each one, and I'll just sit there and ba balance it depending on how I think it needs to sound in that song. So we'll kind of see what I had going on here. We'll start with the room. There's some automation on here. We'll try to ignore that for now. Tear it down, build it stronger than before. Forge it from fire and build it to endure. Steal your heart, if only for the fight. So it's like a nice short little room on there. I use that. It was the same room that I put the acoustic guitar in, just on its own plugin. Um, with a lot of reverb, especially vocal reverbs, I'll put, again, filter out some of this low end. I don't want that stuff building up and getting mushy later on in the mix. So if it doesn't need to be there, I just get rid of it. I can, I'm actually surprised I didn't put more processing on my reverb here. I'll put pre-EQ, post-EQ, I'll put compressors on my reverbs, all sorts of fun things. Compressing reverb is really fun. I didn't do it on this one. I think I was going for more of a natural sound. Um, but here I did take out some of the low end just in case I don't want that stuff creeping up on me. So there's my short room. Tear it down, build it stronger than before. Forge it from fire and build it to endure. Just a nice quick one. So I have a plate on here as well, tucked down a little more. Tear it down, build it stronger than before. Forge it from fire and build it to endure. Tiny bit longer little bit brighter. This is just the plate one on this convolution reverb. I use D-verb all the time. The room plate and hall settings on those guys, they're great. So you don't need to go nuts with your reverbs, but it's nice to have a little bit of fun with them. Um, and I love plates. Same thing, filtered out some low end that might creep up on me. And then finally, my longer one, my hall, tucked down even further. Tear it down, build it stronger than before. Forge it from fire and build it to endure. It's got a couple seconds of reverb on it. I don't want this thing to be washed out, so that's really just there to kind of help the thing move along. But you'll kind of hear when you stack them all together, they're a little bit cooler sounding. Tear it down, build it stronger than before. Forge it from fire and build it to endure. It creates a more kind of complex reverb sound than just one thing. And as you're going, you know your room's short, your plate's medium, and your hall's long. So if you need to kind of tailor that tail a little bit more, you can bring one up or one down. If you need a bit brighter, you can bring up the plate. If you need a bit warmer, you can bring up the room. It's really fun to kind of stack reverbs like that. Um, and you can have a lot of fun with mixing and matching different ones. So those are my normal three that I put on there. Just a simple room, a simple plate, simple hall. I hope you enjoyed all of those. It's a lot of fun to be able to do these and cherry pick some seven different approaches, seven different songs, because I, over the years, people have said to me, that's not the way to do it, or that's the way to do it, or I like this, or I don't like that. And I realized, yeah, I agree. There is no one way to do it. It depends on the song, depends on the singer, it depends on so many different things. 
but here we have seven completely different ways of mixing vocals. In fact, there's one here with Bob Horn and Eric Rikers, where there's actually two different guys mixing the same song in two completely different ways. So I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned, we'll do more of these. These are a lot of fun to do. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. And of course, don't forget to leave any comments and questions below. So long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, au revoir, adios, goodbye.